But one of the things that are going to stop us from moving into what God's called us to do is um, a, a lack of recognition of present truth. So let me go to uh, Second Peter. Chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, New Bible, all the pages stick together. Verse 12, so 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 12. Therefore I will always be ready to remind you of these things, even though you already know them and have been established in the truth which is present for you. Present day truth. Present day truth is what is required for now. It's um, Present day truth is there might have been yesterday. Yesterday's truth is still truth, but it was for that season. It was for that old, it was an old wineskin, right? So it's still a truth, but it's a wineskin. And that we needed that for that, like I was born again in the, the was it the word and faith season so that was the wine skin that was the the word and the faith and so that was the the mindset that was the tradition that was everything that held it together that was the pattern of thinking and acting that was the influence that I was under the influence of the word and the spirit which is not wrong it's right it's great but then along came the 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 prophetic and then everything so much wasn't on the word and the spirit. That was the old, the present truth was that God was raising up the prophetic. And so things change and things are, uh, move along differently. So at the very beginning, when Jesus was born, I remember he was born as a king and he died as a king. But he came completely different to what Israel expected. Israel was expecting a king that would be a king in fact, that would um, destroy the, the oppression that was over them through the Roman government. They expected a king that would establish them geographically like a normal king and a normal priesthood. But Jesus came as the Messiah who was becoming a king over men's hearts. It wasn't so much what Israel saw. They, they expected one thing, but the present day truth of Jesus Christ was something else. And so this is where it, it happens now at the moment, what we're going through. God is, is moving and changing things and there is the, the letting go of an old wineskin so that he can bring in and establish a truth, which has always been a truth, but it is for this season. Like in First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, I think it talks about the sons of Issachar, that they understood the, the times and the seasons and they knew what to do. So that, that Issachar tribe understood the times and the seasons and they knew the plan. They not only recognised the season that they were in, but they knew the plan that was required. They knew the action that was required for them to take place so that they could have the fullness of what God had for them. And the name Issachar actually means a reward. So when you know the time and the season, when you know the, what needs to be done and you do it, there is a reward that you receive. And so a present day truth is understanding the time and the season. It's understanding the, um, the, the action plan that God wants you to take. And then it's the, the fulfillment of that. So the, the amazing thing about the... Um, understanding your seasons and your times, that can be for you as an individual. It might be for you as a couple or a family. It might be for open heaven. It could be for the nation. It can be in so many different areas. But first and foremost, do you understand the season that God is doing in your life? What is the season that you're in? What is the time that you are in? Um, what, is, what is he doing? And so sometimes when he's moving us from one season into another season, that season of transition, we're, remember we're going to be crossing a threshold so we have to do it with honour and all of that. But when we're crossing over, sometimes it's the mindset that stops us. When um, Israel was living under the law, everything was about what they did. You know, you can't commit adultery. But when Jesus came, he said, you've heard it said of old, but now I'm telling you present day truth. You can't even look at a woman to lust for her in your heart. So he said, it's no longer about what you do. It's now about what you think. It's now about your inner motives. It's about your motivation. And so it's recognising that the present day truth under the law of Moses was it was all about what they did. But the present day truth with Jesus is that your, your, what you did comes out of what you think. And so there's a change. 
And so when God is taking us through a change of transition, there, there has to be a change in our mindset. We have to see things differently. We have to think differently. We have to move differently. Because if we stay thinking and everything the same, it's not a change of transition. You're just digging a deeper rut as you go around the mountain one more time. So this present day truth is what is God talking to you about now? And what is it that you have to change the way you think, what, the way you see things? What is, what is it that is changing? What is the traditional way of thinking that is keeping you where you are? You cannot think the same way when you're moving into a new season because if you think the same way, you'll never move into the new season. You have to think differently. So you have to understand what the present day truth is. What is the current revelation? Maybe that's a better word. What is the current revelation that God wants you to have so that you can step into the fullness of what he's got for you in this season? What is stopping you from seeing it? Because it's a present day truth. He said, I'll always be ready to remind you of these things, even though you already know them and have been established in the truth which is present with you. The present day truth. What is the thing that God is wanting to speak to you right now? What is the revelation that he's giving you or wanting to release in you that is going to bring change to the way you think, the way you act, the way you speak, the way you see things? What is that change? Because if you continue to think in the same way, continue to see circumstances in the same way, guess Guess what? You'll never move into the new season. You'll be stuck and caught by tradition, by um, lack of renewing the mind, so to speak. You'll be caught and trapped in the past season and you'll never quite get into the new one. And who has felt frustrated in their walk with the Lord? I have. I, there's been times when I have felt so flippant frustrated that I thought, God, if you don't do something, I think I'm going to explode. I can't handle this anymore. But it's not about God doing something. It was about me changing the way I think, the way I was seeing things. I was expecting something new, but I was still thinking the old way, still seeing things the old way. I hadn't changed my perspective. I hadn't looked at things differently. And so one of the things that um, we're looking at, you know, we're restarting distinction in 2024, the year of more or whatever it might be, who knows, but we're re restarting distinction so what the, I have to start from the end. Like what kind of people do I want to come out of distinction? What, are the, what do I want, what kind of quality of character or what is the thing that I want to see in the people that go through distinction? What is it that I want to see in them? What is the end result? So if I know the end result, then I can work backwards and put in place the proper, um, proper courses and the proper things so that they are fully and completely equipped to go through distinction and leave the way God wants them to. I, have, I was dean of a Bible college. I lectured in Bible college for years. Let me tell you, there's something that's so frustrating. It's gone. You can hear me. I just need that for the... Um, so what happened in Bible college? You've got people coming to Bible college because they didn't know what else to do with their life. So they thought, well, I'm just going to sit in Bible college for 12 months and I'll have a bit of a think and, you know, something will work out. But that changes the tone of the Bible college. They weren't there for God. They were there for a soft place that was off study, you know, government paid so that they could think about what they wanted to do. But that changed the tone of everything. When we were a Bible college where people actually, that was not off study, uh, was not governmental approved for off study or anything else, they came because they wanted to come. They came because they knew that God was going to do something in them. They came because they were knew they were called to Bible college, right? And so that, that was, we, the the chapel times we would have, the, the, the presence of the Holy Ghost would be so thick, it was almost like a mist at times. It was amazing. But then it changed when the, the board over the church decided, oh, no, we need to get some OS study. Some of the students are having problems paying their bills, so we'll get OS study in. Hey, all they had to do was pray with them and build their faith. The money would have come in, right? But no, we went. they got OS study. And what happened was the whole tone of the Bible college changed. We had to change the, the subjects that we taught, and it had to to include a percentage of government. Oh, I wasn't going that far because it might go on YouTube, but it, it had to include a <laughs> but it had to include a percentage of governmental 
things on whatever. We could not, um, we could not do it as a... Uh, we had, there was a, it was a competent, not yet competent, instead of a pass and fail. Right, so they could redo it and redo it until they actually got it right. But that means if we sent anybody to go and work at a church or be an intern at a church, they had no idea whether they knew this stuff or not. They were just supposed to be confident, which means, well, maybe if I put it in three times or the third time, I'd be lucky and get it passed. It changed everything, right? And so we can't afford to do that with a distinction or with anything else. What we want and what I want in open heaven are people that are hungry for the things of God, that, you know, you just know that you're called of God. It doesn't matter if you, you might not even know what you're called to, but you know the hand of God is on your life. You know that he's calling you. You know that he wants you to step into something and you're here and you're saying, yes, God, whatever it is you want, I'm here. I'll do whatever it is you want. I just, I'm, I'm here. God, I'm here. This is what we're after. People that are, are just like living sacrifices, right? Um, but that it changed so much in Bible college. Chapel just became less than exciting. The presence of God wasn't there. The gifts of the Holy Spirit no longer flowed. It was, it was so sad. You know, when we knew what we had and then it came back to, this new thing this wasn't what God intended and so the mindset of the of the board of the church was that well we need to help the students get the funds so they can do Bible college so we'll get our study but that changed the lesson structure that changed the tone of the students that came in that then changed the the presence of God in chapel it changed everything but it was the wrong way right? So what we're after is we need to be sold out for God we need to change what is it that you want in your life where, where do you think God is taking you? How can I help you get there? How can I help you get where God wants you to go? What is it that you need from open heaven? What do you need from us so that you can step into what God's calling you to? For you, I am praying, no work on Sunday. Yes. That's finished. Yes. That's finished. That has to finish. Yes. You need to be here. Yes. Clifton should not be working at night so he doesn't come either. You know, others are working so they don't come. That, that's, that's, not, that's not God. He can provide in other ways, right? That stops you from coming together. It stops you from being fed the word of God. And sure, you can feed yourself through your podcasts and YouTubes and, and all of that. We can feed ourselves, but it's the coming together. It's, you know, the relationship that's built. It's, it's talking to somebody and praying with somebody and having a chat in the kitchen over a cuppa. It's building that relationship so that we, we actually come into a, we're actually forming a, a family, a body. We're coming together. This is what's important. But when we've got people who can't come because of work or can't come because of that or whatever, you know, that, that's a... That's a tearing away. And so, you know, we've got to start working on some things and changing some. How, is God first in our life or not? Is he first? Well, if he's first, that makes some, for some awkward decisions because sometimes it's like, well, well, I really want to do that. But, oh, no, God's not really in that. I know I should be doing, you know, so it makes for some awkward decisions sometimes. But what I keep going back to when we're looking at decision, at distinction, when I'm looking at open heaven, what I saw in that Bible college was the saddest thing because it went from an on fire Bible college where the, the glory of God and the mist of the Holy Spirit would come into chapel, uh, you know, where people would go out and they're starting churches, they're going to other countries, to people that would come in, do a course, and then just go out and get a job. And it was like, just get a job. It wasn't even that their calling was to business or anything. You know, and, and I don't want that here. And I don't want that for distinction, which is why we laid distinction down for 12 months, because I need to get it right. I need to hear what God is saying and I need to get it right. And I need to see what the end result is so that he can walk me backwards so that I've got the foundation and, and the courses in place moving forward so we can get what the result that he's after. So it's, it's recognising that we need to move into a present day truth. That God is wanting to do something in each and every one of us. It's a present day truth. So there are things that we think and things that we hold on to, like tradition or, or patterns of thoughts or patterns of the way we pray or whatever. So at the moment, and I'm just waffling so I'll finish, but at the moment in my midnight till three, which was a, I didn't quite manage the whole time in Singapore, but I did the best I could. 
Even my prayers are different. For 30 days, I'm, he's telling me now, I don't want you to pray and ask me for anything. Don't ask me for anything. I just want you to worship me, exalt me, glorify me. So I'm working my way through Psalms and I'm like, but it's, you know, like, it's not easy because you are programmed to ask God for stuff, aren't we? That's what we do when we pray. We ask God for stuff. And now he's like, I don't want you to ask me for anything. I want you to worship me and come into a deeper relationship with me and see me provide for you. Which sounds wonderful, but I'm missing the asking because that's, that's what I, I know to do. That's, so that's not my present day truth though. My present day truth is let it alone and just come and worship. Just come and sit with him. Just come and listen. And so my present day truth in praying is, is, is changing. And now when I go and pray for my clients, I'm finding it difficult because it's affecting that as well, but it's a new thing. And I can't, I can't allow, well, this is the way I've always done it, to stop me from moving forward. I can't allow thoughts that have been always going this way. If I keep thinking that way, I'm never, nothing's ever going to change. Right? We, we need to be open to change. What is the present day truth that God is wanting you to... What is the revelation that he wants you to have for this season? What is the revelation that he wants you to plumb the depths of, to meditate, to pull the richness of it out? What is the revelation that he wants you to walk in for this coming season? What is that revelation? What is that revelation? And so don't allow anything to pull you back, to, to keep you kind of trapped or caught or going around the mountain again. You're going to turn it off, sweetie? Um, we don't want to go around the mountain again. So what is the revelation that he wants you to have now? For this new season and it doesn't hurt to say God what's the end result like, where are you taking what's the end result how much can you show me so if I know where I'm going it will help me craft where I am now so that I know how to move forward there is a revelation it's almost pregnant in the realm of the spirit that he's got for each and every one of you a revelation that will change the way for you as you move forward. So I'm just going to release that over you right now. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, I just want to thank you so much that you love every person here, everyone on Zoom. Father, everyone who's watching on YouTube, you just love people. You are passionately head over heels in love with people. And for each and every person, you have given them a destiny, a plan, a fulfillment, something that is just for them. Just for them. And Father God, I pray right now that you would cut off any ties, any, uh, anything at all that would keep us from thinking in the same way. We don't want to think in the same way. We don't want to move in the same way. We don't want to speak in the same way. Father God, I pray right now that there would be a, a, a slicing off, a, a cutting off of things that would keep us tethered to the wrong season. And I speak right now in the name of Jesus that there would be a release of a spirit of wisdom and revelation, a spirit of wisdom and revelation that will take them forward, a spirit of wisdom and revelation for the new season, a spirit of wisdom and revelation that will be released and unfolded, that the pregnancy of it that I'm feeling in the realm of the spirit will just be uh, just released within each and every one of them. And as they receive that spirit of wisdom and revelation, there will come an unfolding of what is required of them, of what is the, the plan forward, of what is the action steps that they are to take. Father, I thank you for a renewing of the mind. I thank you, Father, for a different perspective. I thank you, Father, that they would even see a different way of, of moving in the realm of the spirit, moving with you, that it would be different, Father different. Father God, I speak right now that we would be like Caleb, that we would be those of a different spirit, a different spirit, the Holy Spirit, one that will see things right through to the end and fulfill what you've called us to do. So Father, let there be a release 
of the spirit of wisdom and revelation and let it impregnate our souls and let it burst forth with life and bring divine change and fruitfulness and fulfillment into our lives for your glory and your glory alone. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Anyone?